All right, thank you. I will call tonight's meeting to order. Would everybody please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jerry, will you take roll call, please? Member Manson? Present. Member Mays? Here. Member Roller? Present. Member Lewis? Present. Member Eastwood? Present. Chairman Harris? Present. Member Rabinowitz is not here. Director Kennedy is here. The rest of the staff are here. Mr. Stidham spoke to Mr. Kennedy today. Thank you, Jerry. I will move that we adopt the agenda for tonight's meeting. I have a first and a second. Does anybody have anything they want to add? No? All in favor? Thank you. All right. I will move to accept the minutes for the April 22nd, 2014 meeting. All right. Seeing a second? Oh, you lost. She seconded first. <laughs> All right. Any changes? Anybody, any discussion on that item? All in favor? Unanimous. Do we have any public comment tonight? Would anybody like to speak? No? I hear we got some Boy Scouts here for their merit badges. You guys don't want to come up and speak? No, you don't have to for that? All right. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to committee reports. Uh, disc golf course, Mr. Eastwood, would you like to uh, discuss that? Thank you. Um, so I went out um, with my phone and got GPS coordinates for all the uh, pin locations and tee pads and sent them to Heather Eisenbarth and she created a map which should be in for your review. Um, that's the proposed layout. Um, it's got distances included. Um, I'd like to thank Heather, that was very useful. Uh, I think it worked out pretty well. Um, Let's see, we, I think John's got three bids back from different disc manufacturers or basket manufacturers. Um, and they're recommending that we take the lowest bid, which is the preferred basket. Um, so that's good. Any questions about the design from the rest of the park board? Uh, yeah, in my in my design my my design that I didn't include in this this formal design, it sort of depends on the like a fill design to determine where and when it can be where it can be placed. Uh, in some cases, where where I drew it on the concept map, it may not be practical practical to put one in. So. Uh, the plan is is for the front nine to go in as soon as possible. Um, that's already pretty well maintained by park staff. Um, as the vegetation dies back and later in the fall, we can start on the back nine. So then we can decide where to put any sort of crossing bridges. So. I think what I what I proposed last month or in that drawing is just sort of conceptually still there. So I think there needs to be at least one more, possibly two, but any other thoughts on this? Anybody? Any I think this looks good. I was I, confused on the on the yellow ones and twos. Oh, those are practice baskets. <laughs> I know. Okay. The green and, and yellow looks pretty close to my eyes. Yeah. Um, I'm glad we walked it when we did with, uh, I think Brian was there and uh, rest of some of the staff because now when I went and got the GPS coordinates, the woods are very heavily grown and there's a lot of, um, actually pulled two ticks off me right off the bat. So, and I was moving pretty quick. So I'm um, glad we didn't do it that when I went out there last time to get the coordinates. So it'll be a little while before I want to start, start working back there. But um, I think and you all felt good about the ones that are close to the street. They're not too close to the street. Uh, we re redesigned one hole. Um, was number nine. Mm -hmm. um, 
originally was along the football field down to where kind of two starts and they thought that was too close so that one was redesigned we moved five over a little bit as well uh, moved, it was originally down a little further south so we moved it a little bit closer to the sidewalk you're not worried about two two's going away from the street oh okay um, mine then. Eric, yeah. you've got two number twos there yeah yes. which is the one that we use there'll be two there'll, there'll be, be two, two pads, pads. Yeah. okay a couple of holes i put some alternate pads in okay uh like three and eight those uh -huh. are the other the water holes um, try to keep those okay. so that a beginner doesn't have to throw over the water if they don't want okay. to. Although I will say when, when we went out and walked the course, John did throw off of three over the water and he's a beginner and he had no problem clearing the water. So That's because his always went to the left. Well, that's he's a right-handed <laughs> player and that's the way. But I will say uh, the that's ones the with the lines play. would be the Eric T's and the yes. cheater ones would be my T's. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's how you look at it. Yeah. Um, we also talked, John and I met and talked a little bit about the, the quotes and then we also talked about how to, to install the pads. The baskets can go in as soon as we get them in. That, that's probably a day or weekend worth of work. Um, the tee pads will take a little bit more to excavate and, and get those in. And what we discussed was that we would try to form up uh, what equivalent of a, con like a cement truck would, which depending on the calculations could be anywhere from five to six pads. So we do five or six pads at a time. And a lot of that's dependent upon what's, when, when, we, when staff has available to help um, and when the people that I have that can help can help as well. So, so this is an in-house. Putting in the, yeah. the concrete pads will be an in-house project. Yeah. So that's kind of the strategy to install the tee pads. The baskets, those are, those are pretty straightforward. So two things um, I think that are action items. One is to formally approve the design. And then two, um, we have three bids and staff's recommending that we, that we buy the cheapest bid, low bid. And the, the difference between the, the bids were quite substantial. So the budget cost of what I had originally was like 9,000. So we were able to get them for I think 6,700. So part of that's some of my contacts that I have, but um, so save this 20. Are the bids in here? Real question the about. Here? No, the bid's not in the packet. No. I, I just made note of the, the lowest bid. Okay. Because they're not formal bids. All the ours is email bids. So, so uh, it's under 10, you can do three bid process. So, is this for the first nine, or is this for, 18. The, oh, for the 18? So the 6,700 would be for the 18 baskets? Yes. And Actually, 20. 20 baskets, yeah. Oh. Not for concrete. Not for concrete. Yep. How much would, would, would the concrete cost? Uh, Do we know? We don't know yet at this point. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, what you need is a, a motion to approve? We'll do it when we get to that okay. section. Yes, yes. Real quick question around. Um, so, we would begin on the, the first nine and then wait till the fall for the back nine, or would, would we begin on the first nine and back nine immediately? We'll focus our efforts on the front nine, get it playable, and then as time allows, we'll start working on the back nine. And we'll go ahead and purchase all the baskets. Yeah, they're now. they're bought as a as this group. I mean, they're they're bought as a set essentially. So they'll come all they'll come all in at, at the same time. Great. Eric, where do we get the group the, where do we get the discs? Um, all over. All over. People bring their. Yeah, but I don't have one, oh. and I, I'm thinking you, of uh, I would like to try this. I'll, I'll set you up. Oh. You can buy them. There's two disc stores in Kansas City. Okay. Uh, you can buy them at Dick's Sporting Goods. The Sports Authority, once it opens up, we'll probably have, okay. have them as well. Academy. Academy. Academy sorry. Yeah. Academy. Academy. Okay. Mr. Kenny, can I ask you a question? Um, it, with, it, if, assuming we anticipate uh, growth or people interested in the sport and they're starting off on uh, 
the first T, can we start just putting thoughts together on expanding that um, parking lot over there? I think we can expand it a little bit uh, farther to the east. I don't think we could go three wide, but it maybe starts interfering with the number one practice tee. But, um, you know, with growth in that area, that's really the only spot we got to go for that parking lot. I'd like to just start putting thoughts together for that, <clears throat> what our options are, okay. My, how much it would be. In terms of disc golf, I mean, you've got – four spots you could park at that starts you off at a, at a hole. Now, it's not always on hole one, but you can either start at hole seven or you can start on hole 10 or you can start on hole 13. 16 is crazy. Yeah. So there's four parking lots that we maintain that if we're like, if we do do a tournament there, we would recommend that they all park in different locations. So it's not. I also measured the distance between hole one and hole 10, like the TUT pads, it's a thousand feet. Is kind of what the difference, the, the, the walking distance between those two, which isn't, that's not terribly long. But I didn't know how far, how far it was, but I measured it with the GPS coordinates and that's what it ended up being. And comparatively to the other courses, this equal more, I would say the courses I've been had don't have this much parking. You know, by yeah, by this has place. a lot more parking than other courses for sure. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? If not, we'll, we'll we'll bring this back up here in just a second. Let's move on to staff reports. Mr. McLean, would you like to start, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, as you see in the packet, I'll just hit some of the key points. It is a very busy time of the year, as we all know, with. Uh, sports wise in spring and going into summer on the recreation side of things. Uh, youth competitive season it is scheduled to end next week. Uh, it, it started in uh, the second our third week of April. Uh, every team had 14 games we shared with Pleasant Hill and Belton with our competitive baseball league. I am very pleased to say we only had three rainouts. I know we had some definite wet times as well as it started drying out, of course, the last couple weeks. But with those three rain dates that we had, we actually had games on um, nights that Belton and Pleasant Hill rained out. So thanks to the new infield surfacing that we have done, that project has really helped <coughs> us out. And I'm very excited with that going into the rec season, which started last Monday. Very busy. If you guys are ever driving out by there, every field is booked all the way up through to about the last week of June. So if we do have rain makeups, they're going to be sporadically through, throughout. We have some very minimal open slots, or we'll use that last couple of days of June, first couple of July if we have to. So that's going full swing. Adult started a little late um, without any other weather delays. We'll be ending mid-June, and then we'll start at the end of June with our uh, summer leagues. We will be offering adult men's as well as co-ed, so we'll be adding that co-ed element. Meetings that we've attended or that have been attended, I met with the uh, with Ray Pex, varsity basketball coach, and we've talked about different expansion projects with the uh, basketball program so we're working out some new ideas with that so very excited with that opportunity to work with the school district a little bit more and he's working on uh, gonna do some coaches clinics for us uh, for our volunteer basketball coaches and so we're looking at expanding that program so we should see that expansion um, this fall so that was very good also been working on updates with rec track uh, our current software system as well as team sideline and the city website we've been working <coughs> along with the communications coordinators in updating information trying to get it current and out there with that being said we also have worked on preparations for a new uh, to join with a new mobile app it's ghost drive um, not ghost drive it's go strive a lot of people confuse that but it is recognized by National Recreation Park Association. It was brought to us. Uh, Mr. Kennedy actually uh, 
heard about it at or saw it in one of the magazines that we get through the NRPA and we did some research into it. It was presented to us as well at national conference in Houston back in the fall and we are one of the first 150 cities to join this mobile app and we are announcing the live starting live with it the first of June so we should have everything updated by the end of this week so you can download the free app and it takes you right to our programs different offerings that our department has so very neat for any mobile device so we're looking forward to that new opportunity to promote our programs and our facilities and offerings and then finally I wanted to touch on um, special events and summer quests special events uh, our recreation coordinator Jerry Lynn she held movie in the park with the movie frozen on May 9th it yes and Jamie was there it was quite busy but it was very good turnout we had outside of um, the movie cars I heard that that was if we didn't beat that movie a couple years ago that it was a real close tie to that one so the it was one of the biggest ones we've ever had since they started the program years ago so very excited with that and then of course summer quest getting ready to start it next week uh, with a partial week because of school so camp counselors have been hired directors over there they're working on the house getting preparations getting equipment in we're getting um, snacks lined out and all that good stuff our our day-to-day -day planning and preparations for that program so that's all I have see if I have any questions for mr. McLean I got a list uh, is ghost drive free yes it is yes. nice all right so we get uh, Facebook updates and emails about different programs so it's just another way to say this is the programs we offered this is the start times this is where you sign up is that yes, kind of the purpose actually the app once you download it you can just click on it at any time and it takes you up to your current location so it uses your location so it's gps coordinated as well so if you're down in springfield missouri it'll bring up any local area park so it brings up where you're at or you can search by location and you can type in raymore parks and recreation if somebody was uh, were to come in for, on a vacation from South Carolina and they had it out there and they were coming into Kansas City area it would take you to local areas um, right now we are the only one currently in this area that has it um, so if you're anywhere around Harrisonville Lee Summit Felton Raymore this area it'll take you straight to our offerings and then you can click on youth volleyball and it'll take you right to our page where you can get into web track and register or see what the it'll show the price it shows the dates it was dates offered when to sign up by and the cost so um does it also send out push notifications like for I'm emergencies sure rain outs one. things like that if I'm you are sure. signed up for a program probably doesn't i know, do does not it. know about that one okay. i do not believe so but like i said we're still learning about all of okay. its capabilities awesome awesome Anybody else? Any questions? Thank you, sir. Mr. Rulo. Thank you. Um, I offered, a, or I also did a um, <clears throat> written report in the packet. I uh, just wanted to hit on a couple key items. I wanted to say thank you to the uh, Raypex School District. Their middle school uh, brought out <clears throat> close to 100 kids. They split up 30, uh, three groups of 30-ish kids. Uh, they were at Hawk Ridge Park, they were at Memorial Park, and they were at Recreation Park. Uh, picking up trash, uh, cleaning up the parks, helping the parks department out. Uh, greatly appreciated. We supplied them trash bags and rubber gloves. Um, and then they had a nice lunch underneath the shelters. Um, cleaned up after themselves. It was uh, an all around great day, um, in my opinion. Also, just on the uh, last bullet note there, wanted to let you guys know that the Missouri Department of Conservation came out last week to, the, um, to Johnston Lake in Hawk Ridge Park. They, uh, they shocked it again. Um, I'll get a full report back here soon, but he just wanted to let me know the fish population is looking very good. Uh, the grass carp that we put in a few years ago, um, they're doing a great job um, taking care of uh, American pond weed and coontail. Um, there is one other algae that's coming up the grass carp does not take care of. He thinks it's very small. Um, 
small patches that are coming up. He thinks it's due to the, the dry weather that we've had. Um, so we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, he did notice that some of the, the banks that were getting cut, you know, we've talked about riprap and everything else. Um, he said some of them um, are healing themselves and vegetation starting to grow, but he said there's, there's still a great deal of uh, banks that are getting cut and eroding. Um, and the others were just some, uh, some uh, woody vegetation that's grown up on the backside of the dam. He gave me some suggestions so staff can go out, cut down, and uh, spray a chemical on the woody, um, <clears throat> the woody plants and uh, should keep them from overtaking. Other than that, I'll entertain any questions. Okay. Any questions for Ms. Hicks? Um, what exactly do you mean by shocking? MD, uh, you know, Missouri Department of Conservation came out and shocked the lake. What, what they do is they come out with a boat and they basically, they have um, um, metal rods in the, in the water and they get a sample of the fish that are in the lake. It okay. doesn't hurt the fish by any means. Um, it, it's a low voltage, the fish float to the top, they scoop them up, they measure every single fish that comes up, and then they, they uh, uh, put it into some equation and it'll tell them exactly um, if, if we need more bass, if we need more bluegill or channel cat or whatever. So when I get the full report back, it'll, uh, I'll, I'll uh, bring it in next month. Do sure. we have a lot of fish there? Oh yes, yes, there's, there's, it's, a, it's a very good fishing lake out there. Good, thank you. Um, the, the, what do you, I don't know what you call them, the in Rec Park parking lot, the, the areas where there's concrete and grass, what are you? The islands. Thank you. Have they gotten cleaned out recently? It's on the list for this week. Okay. It'll be, it'll be looking very nice with brand new mulch and everything okay. for the tournament A this weed weekend. as tall as my son in there. What's that? Of them. I said there's weeds as tall as my son in a couple of them. Some of them, so. now there is native plants in there and some of those are the tall ones, the tall okay. green ones. Um, yeah. That are so actually so they're, they're intentional. Yes. Okay. Some of them are intentional. Some of them are not. I, Sorry. I, 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 I <laughs> I'm, uh, tell, I'm not all native, myself. right? Have it's all green, native. Uh, on the list. It did yeah. kind of look a little yeah. scraggly. Okay. No, that'll be taken care of before these Great. tournaments this week. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions, though? Uh, can, uh, can I ask what age kids do this school send out? Elementary kids, middle school? Um. Fifth and sixth. Fifth and sixth grade. Yeah. How did you Quick get response. them to come Thank out? you. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kennedy. Thank you. <clears throat> Just a couple things, uh, real quickly. The survey is out for the Civic Center. Uh, it was mailed out to residents last week. Uh, they sent out fifteen hundred or fifteen. Excuse me. Fifteen hundred. I think this says fifteen thousand. 1,500 questionnaires uh, were sent out, um, and I strongly encourage anyone that received one of those to take the time to fill it out. It's gonna have a large impact as to what uh, we eventually will see in this Civic Center. Uh, like John said, uh, summer day camp registrations, uh, they've been really busy. Jerry, how many do we have, do you know, at this time? 78 kids have signed up for day camp, so that's, that's a good start. Uh, the Arts in the Park event scheduled for June 21st. Uh, we are still in need of artists. Uh, strongly encourage anyone in the community that would uh, like to display and sell their art to contact Parks and Recreation, and we'll get you set up with a booth for the June 21st date, uh, and that is located in the Farmer's Market Park area from 10 o'clock in the morning till 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Great entertainment lineup. Should be really quite excellent as far as the quality of entertainment. Uh, we'll have food, uh, have a kid's craft area. So there's gonna be a lot to do for the whole family. So we hope everybody comes out and, and appreciates the art that's produced in our area and maybe pick something up for your home. Um, a couple of special events on the same day, the Walter Buck Memorial Fishing Derby and the Skateboard Competition are both on the 14th of June. Uh, both events well attended. We're going to be pretty busy as staff that day. Uh, Dan Mapes had hoped to be here today to address the, the board to talk about the skateboard competition, but he had a conflict and couldn't make it. A big thanks to Dan. He's been doing this for years and has done a great job of putting on the event. It's, it's well attended and the kids really, really do enjoy it and have a good time. Uh, finally, on June 2nd, 
uh, the Park Board and the City Council have a joint work session right here in the Council Chambers at 7 o'clock. I'm hoping we can all make it to that event. Uh, a couple items on it are is the Farmer Market Park area. Pastor Beckner is going to be here from the First Baptist Church to uh, talk a little bit about the property that the church owns that is adjacent to the Farmer's Market area to see if we can come to a solution to, to work between the city and uh, the church to develop this MOU so that property could be used by the city for a four park area. Other things is uh, there's some discussion from the council about uh, having a liaison to the council from, uh, to the park board. Uh, so that will be a discussion point. And finally, we will also be presenting the farmer's market uh, master plan to the council, uh, the, the plan that was approved at our last meeting by the park board uh, for their comment and uh, let them take a look at what the park board is proposing to do for that park. John. Okay. I, have one other, I have one other thing. Um, farmer's market begins next Tuesday, June 3rd. Um, do you know how many vendors we have lined up so far? We have over 30 vendors that have already signed up and it's very early, okay? Uh, and next Tuesday we will have face painting and live music. So if you need to get some fruit and veggies, come on out and see us. All right. Any questions? Yes. Um, what is the idea behind the council requiring a liaison between us and them? We did that many, many years ago. I think uh, at this point, Monique, uh, they feel that sometimes the council is not knowledgeable about some of the, the things that the park board talks about. So if they have a council per person assigned and they attend the meetings, uh, it will just help in the communication process between the council and the park board, is the way I understand it. Well, I had a discussion with one of the councilmen too, and I think um, they uh, they they have the similar frustration that we do, we, and they don't want us to toil away on things that worried that they're not going to approve it if they can say right then and there, hey, we'd be on board with that. So, the c discussion I had was fairly positive about them. Well, Monday's discussion should be interesting then. Yeah. So. Okay. I just got some I, that was one we, person. I mean, yeah, I, I we can talk know. about it on Monday. So. That's okay. when we meet Monday. So. Yes, sir. I have two questions. Yes, ma'am. Um, art in the park. Are you only looking for artists, like uh, non non music? Are you looking for what do you define what you're looking for? Right, we're looking for display art, uh, whether okay. it's painting pottery, uh, glass blowing, any, any of those type arts. We're not really looking for arts and crafts, but we do have like a weaver coming. And so it's, it's, I don't want to say fine arts necessarily, but, but it is the arts that- So you already have music and entertainment lined up. Yes, we have, those are paid like events that we are, and we're doing a kind of an interesting thing. Um, we had someone volunteer to do an interpretative discussion or talk on Raymore and history and how it reflects to modern day. And this will, it's not a, it's, I don't wanna say too much. It's, it's a reading by a group and it only takes a few, you know, 10, 15 minutes each time they do it. But uh, this group has been working on this for, for quite some time. So it's gonna be really interesting to see what they bring. Plus, we have a really good Irish band and um, uh, a couple other bands, I think, that are going to be. Okay, so you're good on the music front. Yes. Okay. And there's puppets in there, Jamie, and uh, okay. I have posters and stuff. I'll send them all to you online, but also we will be placing them around in all the businesses that we can in the Raymore area. And I just had one other question. On that 18,000 that we skipped over the very first par paragraph, um, it looks like it's you're saying it's medical insurance, workers comp insurance, proposed two percent increase. Are those? Is there a reason that it's it's a higher increase than what a standard increase would be from year to year? I mean, have we just not updated those things in a while? Or 
If, if I could, I'd like to refer to either Sidney or Mr. Fearborn to answer that question. They will do a lot better job than I, if they would mind coming up here and well, talking you, a little bit about If you ask me, that. only a 2% increase in medical insurance is awesome. Well, yeah. that's, that's I'm not saying it's negative. I'm just curious because it is more than in the past couple of years. If I looked at the document right now. It, it is, Maybe and, I and I it's a not a 2% increase, increase for medical insurance. So. What we're actually, what these actually come to is for total personnel costs, you're going to be looking at about 2.9% increase over what we are projecting this year to end. Okay. Uh, we plugged in approximately a 2% increase for salaries, and then we plugged in actual dollar amounts that are being projected from workers' compensation for next year, and the same percentages Parks only pays a certain percentage of that, obviously. Uh, same thing for workers' comp. We pay that by employee, but it all comes to about a 2.9% increase, but only salaries are being estimated right now. And that's just an estimate. Some of those numbers could change. Okay. Um, as long as I'm standing here, if I could expand on that, I was gonna come up during the budget, sir, but um, at, in, in your packet, you're going to notice on the cover memo, at the end of the first paragraph, there is a line in there, fortunately this was offset by a transfer, these costs, mm -hmm. by a transfer of the additional $50,000 from the city's general fund that again will be realized in the 2015 budget. So It, it will be my intention okay. to make that recommendation that the that that transfer remain at the 100000 which is an increase of 50000 from previous years. Mm -hmm. Please remember, it is up to the city council to approve that on right. a year-to-year -year basis. So if they were not to approve that, obviously 50000 would have to come out to get to a balanced budget. Either 50000 in expenses would have to be cut, right. or we would have to go to the interpretive measure of it's still a balanced budget as long as you have fund balance to pay for those amounts. So you wouldn't necessarily have to cut into your expense budget. It just means that your final budget would go down by fifty thousand to I think <coughs> approximately two hundred and fifty two seven eighty eight. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So can I ask you a question? So it is not your interpretation that the transfer from the general fund is now a hundred thousand dollars, that it's still fifty thousand dollars with requested additional fifty thousand? <coughs> no, it's my interpretation that I am recommending to the city council one hundred thousand dollars. But the city council can cut, raise, or do whatever they think okay. is best. All right. That's all. Okay. Thank you. The original 50 still isn't ever guaranteed. That's exactly. what you're saying. Yeah. Very good, yeah. sir. Yeah. Right. Perfect. Thank you. Anything else for Mr. Kennedy? Um, what, did you say that we have a meeting with the city council on June the 2nd? Yep. Joint session. Yeah, I think there was an email a week ago. There, there will be an agenda that comes out. I can't tell you exactly when, but I'm sure it'll be in the next couple days. They always try to send that out by Thursday. So you will all be receiving that along with any information. I was instructed to ask if there is anything else that the park board would be interested in discussing with the council in this meeting. I don't know if anybody give an answer tonight. If anybody thinks of anything, email me and I'll email John and we'll add it. Thank you. Now that I think about it, I might have been the only one to get the email. Just with a heads up. I think it just went to Tim and I. Well, when she got confused, I thought, well. Brian, it did go know. out in one of those this week things that I did. I put that we were going to have a joint meeting. Oh, yeah. That's where I saw it. It did go to me. It must have gone to you, too. Was there a meeting planner for Wow. No meeting planner. That's it. It didn't officially happen unless there's a meeting planner going out. All right. We'll move on to old business. Uh, old business 8A, uh, the approval for the design for this golf course. Uh, we've already discussed it in length. Uh, we all saw the design here. Sir? I walked it. 
Go ahead, I'm sorry. I walked the course. I think it looks really good. We did have a couple of changes that looked like they were made to keep some stuff away from the streets. Uh, we talked about uh, those ones up by the uh, trail. I think that was moved back too off of the, um, the uh, what was it, the sand pit or wherever the grass doesn't grow over there. We kind of brought it back to the other side of the trail, I think. Um, now the brush one, that one scares me. I didn't really like walking through there, but I would only play the front nine if it was me, but I'm bad too. Um, so, I, we, you know, we, now we didn't decide if this is the plan we like and we move forward. If it's the location, I think we kind of all settled on the location. Uh, now we need to approve the design. Sir, if I could say something. Yes, Can sir. we make an, an old business A and B and split this item into two parts? Um, it's been recommended uh, that we have one vote on for the design and one for the, for the design purchase and one on the purchase of the baskets separately even though we adopted the agenda we will modify it I apologize. that's okay that's okay we're pretty informal crew up here all right so we'll add a b item and that will be for the uh, um, uh, disc golf uh, disc catcher baskets Okay, I will. Uh, I'll move that we go ahead and accept uh, the uh, disc golf course designed by Mr. Eastwood as our final design. Second. 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 Up person. Second. Any discussion on this? All in favor? Unanimous. Good job. Congratulations. It's only been two years in the making, or so. And item B is um, sixty-seven hundred dollars. That is correct for. 20 disc kit. I assume there's a couple. Oh, were we going to have any extras in case or well, just repairs? Yeah. So we moved one, we'll take one okay. Okay. Uh, I will move that we go ahead and approve uh, uh, the amount of $6,700 to purchase the disc catcher baskets from Innova, Innova, disc golf. Second. second. That's Jamie one. Jamie. Jamie got the second. Uh, any discussion on that? All in favor? Unanimous. Cap, that cap doesn't stick too well. All right, new business. Uh, this is uh, item A will be the approval of the 2015 operations budget. Uh, we had a work session on that. We had plenty of discussion. Anybody have any other questions since we uh, met in our work session? No, nobody. Everybody's quiet. All right, I'll move. We go ahead and approve the operations budget as submitted for the uh, 2015 fiscal year. Second. I have a first and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. All right, item B under new business, the approval of the farmer's market area master plan. This one might require a little more discussion. Yep, I hear uh-huh already. Let's get to it in our packet in the back. Uh, it's page 24. 24. 24, that's the master plan. Uh, and we saw this in last month's meeting. Uh, for those that weren't there, uh, this is the area along Washington and Maple and Olive and Adams, kind of the area in between. Um, we currently have uh, the phase one and phase two park area, <clears throat> and we're looking to improve uh, phase one, which will become the uh, primary vendor area, I'll call it. Uh, and you will see, and I'm going to butcher this color, I'm going to say bluish purple, is the, uh, if I remember the size, eight, is that 18 by 40? Is that an 18 by 40 pavilion? 120 by 40. Much bigger, much bigger. <clears throat> I, I, I didn't have it in front of me. I was trying to recall it off the top of my head. And how high was it, 18 feet high? Uh, so trucks get in under it? 10 feet high. Just 10? Yes. Okay. Well, we had that discussion last month. I think Bill was wondering if it was going to be high enough. 
Do you still think it's going to be high enough? Maybe. Well, maybe reefers won't be allowed in there. I mean, they could park along the street, right? They'd still be able to park along the street. I'm not a farmer's market guy. I don't. They, they'll be able to back up, but they will not be able to pull underneath. So they'll still be able to work out of their truck, but it's, they'll be able to go as far as the roof line, and then they're going to have to stop. Well, would, would we then have them be in one of the slots along Washington Street? Because that's where our overflow vendors go, correct? No, I would see them as being a main vendor in the parking lot that is adjacent to the, the shelter itself. But like I said, they would not back all the way underneath the thing. They would have their table set in front of their truck that would be underneath the shelter, but the vehicle itself would still be in the parking area. Thank you. Is there going to be sufficient depth to that parking spot so that it doesn't protrude out in the traffic way? I think for so such because an, for such an occurrence. Because what we require is that they be at site well before the event starts mm -hmm. and have their vehicle set. So we will try to place them so it would allow other vehicles still to get by them, but all, all those back end type vehicles like that have to be set before. Uh, five o'clock, four o'clock, four o'clock, four o'clock when the event starts. Okay, thank you. So, are we asking questions about this? Yes. Yeah. Um, I have two. Um, if something were to fall through with expansion area one and two, in acquiring or um, how, whatever appropriate term is, I'm working out an arrangement with the folks who own that, would, would that change the design? Are we preemptive in any way approving a design on something that we haven't acquired? No. The only work that has been done by the committee that put this plan together is for phase one and phase two. Um, the $150,000 that we have for this first part of phase one is everything but the shelter. Uh, staff has requested to the city manager to include an additional $150,000 from the city's capital improvement fund to be used for next year. So the idea is to go ahead and complete phase one with $150,000 from this year, 2014, plus the $150,000 in 2015. So we would do the project pretty much at the same time, but we would be using funds from two different years. And the whole first phase is 300,000? Yes. That's yes. our projected cost. That is working with Public Works, that is the numbers that they came came up with. No, so I guess, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm, if we were not to work out an arrangement with the church, would that change your design at all? You, if you if, look if at- you were all, If you only had phase one and phase two to work with for, Ever. Would you still be recommending the same design? Yes. Okay, and then my second question is, um, do we have an estimate on any reoccurring costs to maintain phase one, if that's what we're recommending? We, I, I mean, it's, it's. I mean, because that's not in the budget, right? There's no, re, uh, we're going to. No maintenance costs. Not, no maintenance costs have been put into the budget for this? No. Um, do we know what that is? I mean, assuming there will be, there will be electricity, water, we, correct? There will be some utilities there, but we have utilities there as we speak. Um, there's there's 10 spots that uh, farmer's market can, can purchase as at, right now for electricity, and they pay for that, which goes in turn to pay back for the utilities. Um, we do maintain the park right now, so we are spending mowing time, mm -hmm. labor up there. Um, you're talking minimal. Okay. That's um, what I'm looking extra. for. Is there anything substantially different no, in reoccurring be costs that by should have been added into the budget? Flower beds, okay. something like that. Okay, now Jamie brought something up that has me perplexed. Expansion area one. Now we built the uh, stage to point directly at that area, really? So now if something happens and we don't get it, do we really want the stage sitting there pointing at somebody else's property? It, it just 
brings up a question for me. Well, that's why I asked if you would change the design. It, yeah, and I'm wondering if that's the case, then maybe we rotate the stage uh, 90 degrees to point more towards the grass in phase two. Maybe we relocate play area over to the left, maybe point the stage more to the right. I wonder if we should come up with a contingency plan that if we only have half of it. Or wait a month. Or, or wait a month. Oh, or, well, I guess we can approve the design, and it, do, it doesn't mean this is what is going to happen, correct? I, I think the elements are going to happen. Now, how they're placed specifically, this is a conceptual drawing that you're seeing here. Uh, we, we've looked at the basic things like locations of utilities. We've looked at elevations, street access, and some of the real basic things at this point. But there has not been specific design other than if you notice in your packet, we have numbers for square footage of sidewalks, pavers, the shelter floor, uh, those type of things. So sure, could it be tweaked? It more than likely will. It will probably not look exactly like this, but this is the general conception that we have come up with and designed that, that we think is, is very functional for the park whether we have the whole park area or if we just have half of it. Yes, ma'am. The cost for putting in all this comes from the city, right? It does not come from our budget, from the park budget. This technically is not a city park yet. Okay. And they have so far designated $150,000 towards this project. Okay. If it is up to them, obviously, we've requested it. Hopefully they will okay. help us. Just want to know. Yes, sir. Just a question around kind of to Bill's earlier one. And I know we discussed the height of the actual market and, and I really like the plan. I like the idea of it too. Why again can't we go to that higher level for the covering in the market so that these trucks can get in? I'm hoping that this shelter is a multi-use shelter. It's not just for the farmer's market that is gonna be there, I don't know how many Tuesdays it is, but we have certain amount of time. And the rest of the time, I'm hoping we can figure out a way to use this for all kinds of different events in the park. If we raise the height, not only will it be much less functional because you're, 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 you're taking away some of the shade, some of the stuff that's, that's involved by raising the wall height and also the cost. The higher you go, the more expensive it's gonna be as far as uh, putting up the support structure. Because when you raise it up, your wind loads, your snow loads, all those things get affected by the height of the facility. I think it's, I agree, I can understand because the usage of it is gonna be more year round or we'll get more usage other than just the market. And so I can, the concept of 10 feet in height, I can, I can readily agree with. We, we did look at several of these facilities. Um, there's a really, really nice one in Merriam. Steve and I went and looked at it and visited with them I looked one at, at uh, uh, Parkville. They, they had a, a nice little shelter there and stuff. And all of them, the one in Overland Park, they're, they're all at this wall height, just about. Yes, sir. Uh, I like the design. I think it looks good. Um, got a question. The little round um, pie chart looking things, are those trees? What are those? Yes. OK. Trees or shrubs? Those are some trees. shrubs. Pursuit. They gotta be trees. Tree. To cover well, the, parking lots. We don't want shrubs covering parking spaces. The, the big old. It'd be yeah. a creeping something, wouldn't it? A shrub that covers parking lot. All right, I will move that we uh, accept the uh, conceptual development plan for the original town park. A second, uh, EB, sorry. Any more discussion? Um, I, so I just want to, yes, I just want to make sure I, I understand. So if 
if something were to happen, it, us, us approving the design is not um, in any way going to, you know, preclude. It's not. It's not. It's not too um, preemptive for an agreement with the church or the other property that you want to acquire. There's no issues that you see in approving a design that could potentially change based on several variables. That's why both those areas are called expansion areas. They're, okay. they're strictly a possibility. This park was designed with what we have now, not okay. with what we hope to have someday. Okay. That's also why it's a conceptual point. Right, right. Yeah. Make the point. Yep. All right, I have a first and a second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. All right, item C, Hawk Ridge Park Plan. Uh, this is to talk about uh, phase one, possibility of phase one improvements to Hawk Ridge Park. Uh, considerations include a possible dog park and a trail around Johnston Lake. Um, did everybody see the plan? And this was our concept from um, uh, Clark Anderson, Clark Anderson Partners. This was the uh, uh, Concept plan C, they came with A and B and we kind of modified that and came up with the C. Um, if everybody looks at their packet, page 29, we did have disc golf up in there. Uh, talking to Mr. Ewoods, Eastwood and some others, that obviously isn't happening there, that isn't the best option. So now it's kind of become open space. Uh, you can see some parking in the upper right, uh, an air, a, a, a play gathering area called Hawk's Nest uh, is what they named it, kind of going off of that theme. Uh, down on the uh, bottom south side, I guess, the one called the southeast corner, that's where they've got the dog park slated in uh, is a possible area. I've heard other people mention uh, possibly the northwest side up where disc golf was at, possibly using that for um, a, uh, a dog park area where we currently have some, uh, some temporary, I'll call it temporary parking because it really wasn't designed to be a, a full-on parking lot, but there's... Uh, a dozen spaces, 20 spaces maybe, mm -hmm. 20, 20, 20 parking spots uh, are, that already exist uh, straight into, uh, is that Johnston Drive? Is that Johnston Drive? Straight up Johnston Drive. So uh, really we're uh, just talking about uh, phase one of that. Uh, and if you look on page 28 of your packet, um, it's uh, there's 191,000 or uh, for almost four hundred thousand dollars, one hundred ninety-one for a dog park and one hundred ninety-two for a trail around Johnston Lake, which does include uh, a retaining wall on the west side lake edge, and then just a limestone trail as opposed to a full concrete or asphalt, uh, and then a dog park. Uh, I did notice the dog park does not include a trail around it. Correct? No walking trail on the dog park, so you just open, it, let your dog run, and just have them have, have at it okay so any discussion on that anybody like to see it now that we're talking about it and got some hard numbers in front of us and some definite thoughts yes sir I, I like the thought of the dog park I'm just curious when we talked about the dog park last year -ish, yep it was around 135 yep why did this one go up well when we talked to the last year when we originally talked about the dog park we were getting uh, the parking lot was going to be uh, donated to us. We were going to have a, 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 the parking lot was already built. This one includes a 25 lot parking lot, 25 spot parking lot, which adds 70 grand to that. Uh, and I don't know, utilities are already there. I know the distance they were talking about running utilities, it was fairly close already uh, when we were talking about that church lot. So I don't know if there's an extra cost in that specific. Um, but that'll obviously add some cost to that. Yeah, it's close. It's close. Do we need, uh, excuse me, do we need the parking lot next to the dog park? Yeah. I guess we Well, do, unless you want to put the dog park up in the northwest yeah, side I, where we I, have I a parking lot. I'm going to say a 25 car lot's going to be small, but that's just me. Yeah. So. I mean, we don't have to really decide today, but do we like where it is in, in Concept C down in the north or the uh, southeast side? Mm -hmm. We prefer to the northwest. I personally like it in the southeast side because I think it's going to get a lot more traffic than anybody's really envisioning. 
and I didn't necessarily want everybody driving up uh, that whole neighborhood to get in there. That's my main reason to put it there, I guess. I would, the only, my only concern with that area is that that, that is the runoff. I mean, there's, it can be wet there. So you don't have to redirect some water if it's going to go there. So I would go walk it before you. Well, I think the farther east you go, it starts to go up, right? The, the, so the parking lot's where it'll be wet. Yeah. Uh, and I assume when we do that, we could. Um, I don't think so. I think you need to go walk it. You should go walk it and take a look at it. It's so far. Brian, or Mr. Chair. Or Mr. Chair. <laughs> yes, Actually, you can call me it's, Brian. It's, it's okay. That is my name. It's, it's, not, um, it's, it's more to the east where they're showing the parking lot there where you get your drainage. Um, not up where, and I don't know if I have the same map. I think I do. But um, your drainage is kind of in the middle, and I think they put it there that way so the water would not be in the dog park. Part of it might oh, be. Oh, you mean where they got the gap between yes. the dog park and the parking yes. lot? That's where it runs. Oh, yes. I thought it ran through that low point of the uh, Well, it, there's a swale that, that, that kind of goes from uh, Price Chopper, and it kind of comes down. Um, you can you can barely see it on this map, but okay. uh, when we get a bigger map, you can really see it. Have that gap in here, then. So right in between. So we're going to build a bridge? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. Uh, Mr. So, Chair, can I have? Yes, ma'am. Could I ask why we don't have a trail inside? Uh, it doesn't have to be a, a ten-foot trail uh, all around the periphery of the dog park. Aren't other dog parks usually with? Yes. With trails. I'll be upset if we don't have one. I, 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 think, I won't approve I think it's it a without one. Thing. It's, a, it's a cost me? thing, I believe, is why it was was left out. Oh. Um, not all dog parks have them a lot of them do yeah um, some of the bigger ones in open area um, basically the dogs end up there they'll run the fence and they'll end right. up making a trail um, and then when people walk it it, it just kind of turns into okay. a path but um, yeah it'd be great to have a trail to where we could go I mean, we, we don't have to have a 10 foot trail inside we can't we leave it at four feet we can do whatever you all want us to do. We want a trail. As long as we got the money. Well, we'll yeah. find money. We'll find money. Uh, so, so I don't, I mean, this is really a discussion item. We don't have to take action on it tonight because uh, we already took action on approving the concept. But now that we're starting to move towards uh, visioning and funding for these, we got to start thinking about how to handle that. Do we want to, do we want to, it is 24 spots, was confirmed uh, by my partner over here. We have uh, 24 official spots up there straight at the end of Johnson Drive. Do we want to take advantage of that and, and, and design a, a dog park on that side, or do we want to keep it on the uh, southeast corner where it is in this concept? Any thoughts, any ideas? I gave mine. If that's the only one, we'll go with it. <laughs> I personally do like the spot where it is on the map because um, I like the ability to add on the future growth in that left, I don't do it south north, the top left corner. Um, but I do wonder, however, discussing the trails, the original design was one that had a lot of features to it and was meant where the features and the trail itself would be in harmony where you have these swirls and things like that. Are we still thinking of doing these swirls or simplifying the actual path itself? Um, because if we simplified the path, yeah. could we create through our budget enough money to have that nice walk and, and eliminate some of the swirling? Again, I, I actually was one of the ones that liked the swirling. I just think it would be weird since we're going to be removing so many other things. Well, some of the swirls were to get to a uh, phase three, you know, like Hawk's viewpoint was at lookout tower, Correct. you know, create the swirl to get to that. I mean, you don't have to do that. And that was phase, that was way down the road. Um, none of the swirls were coming in early. So we're not really kind of pricing that out at this point. We're not, we're not swapping dollars to dollars at this point, okay. you know, cause we haven't set it aside. We don't have that money to say, Oh, we're going to pull from this and instead do this. This is all 
raw and it's going to come out of thin air or Jim's pocket, one of those two. And so, um, I, but I do like the swirls, not necessarily around Hawk's viewpoint, but I do like the, uh, the little bridge they put, that. I love that concept. I would love to keep that. Now, the, uh, that green area that was kind of in front of it, the uh, semicircle, that's a hill, and that was the design with the uh, small amphitheater. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'd call it an amphitheater. I don't think it's quite that big, but, but that concept. Uh, but I don't, you know, I do want it, I want a trail, some sort of walking mechanism in there, 12 feet wide, six no. feet deep. I'm just kidding. I'm just, uh, all right, so we got a second vote for the southeast corner. I like the northwest corner. Oh, no. Oh. You only have me for four more weeks. There's always one. There's, oh, I'm just kidding. It, it, there's already parking there, and it's there flat. There is already parking You don't have there. to worry about any trees. You don't have to worry about any drainage. I, I don't. Why, if, and the only thing that we had on the master plan there was disc golf that we're putting somewhere else. So yeah, what are we reserving that for? You have to have something not reserving it for well, anything. Well, I know, but I mean, conceptually, what, what else would you I'm not reserving it for anything. I know this will get, I'm pretty sure I'll bet something, but that this will be, this park will be jam-packed and you'll have people backing up on Johnston Drive, parking in front of all those houses. I, maybe they are today you already. Got, well, you got 24 spots there. You don't have to add the parking. You, you can even cut the cost. Oh, those 24 spots will be used pretty quick. But you're only going to put 25 in the other spot. I agree. So, but you're backing people up away from those homes. It's a parking lot. I mean, I don't. Understand. As they start filling up the street, zoom up. They'll be parking along this road down here. And alternatively, they would be parking where? If it were on the other corner. Right here. People park on the street all the time. Here. Yeah. Yeah, see, I wouldn't do that either. That drives them even farther into the neighborhood. Did but that's you, me. Uh, but that's me. No one else it's not even my neighborhood, but. Didn't we originally want that to be kind of a passive park? Yep. So the, that area in the northwest, in all due consideration to my me to the members here, I think we should leave that free for people to do whatever they want to do there. And there are a lot of trees up there and it would be more fun for children to be able to run around there but i think yes, that i no, like the area where the dog park is there's, there's no, no trees. trees that was those it's, were all going to be added field. it's a flat field until steve starts planting them he's planting a hundred trees aren't you there you go a thousand trees <laughs> Hey, let's put a couple of fire hydrants out there. Call it a dog park. Uh, all right, so we got a couple that like the north, a couple that like the south. I guess we're not really kind of deciding on the plan today. We're just really uh, talking about it, just talking out in public. I guess we can do this for hours. I, I think we should go look at it. That's the other thing. We've John and I have driven it before, but I think you guys it. should get to take a look at I, it. I drove by and saw that I didn't walk it. Or not okay. without a scooter, I wouldn't. This, this is strictly a starting point. Yeah. You guys asked us to yeah. put together some pricing for a trail around the lake and a dog park. Okay. And that's kind of what you see before you now. And this is more or less, I think, for the future as far as planning for the board and stuff. And that's, that's all that's really represented here. So, and you know, I would have the same question if, if, and if it's possible to add a line item for reoccurring costs or cost to maintain, whatever you want to call it, anytime we talk about this. I think we need to know that because in this case, it's going to be more significant, and that would be something we need to consider in the overall budget. So, how many people just keep it? Right. To that Hi. point, I'm also kind of curious around, I mean, this company put this together. Um, professionals far smarter than I I would just like to when we do come up with something that's more real can we go back to them and just ask them any questions and get a sense of why they put the parking lot there because I think it's very much like Brian said they put it there because of input from us but also from consideration of the neighborhood and keeping the neighborhood without having a lot of traffic to it so I would hate to move away too far from this plan if it's 
if they put a lot of thought that we would just be rehashing the same thing out. I can give a couple of notes. Remember going through this. So you'll, if you'll see the northern parking lot. You'll see a bunch of spots on the northern half. So that was the original golf disc golf design. And they put a bunch of parking lots up there with the understanding that a bunch of people would come play disc golf and use the grass and whatever. And the playground, uh, uh, Hawk's Nest is the is the playground area. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Red Tail Landing, what they're calling Red Tail Landing, the original design there uh, was a boat ramp. So uh, I think it was Concept A maybe had a boat ramp there uh, so people can uh, put belly boats or uh, paddle boats or whatever in. in. And then that was kind of when we said, no, we didn't really want a boat ramp on the lake. And, but then the parking lot was already there, so then that kind of became an, an effort for the dog park because that discussion kind of came up in the middle of this whole project was the dog park. So I think someone said, well, what about out uh, here at Hawkridge Park? I think they might have had it at the Northwest at one point. They, they did, did have the they had the dog park up here at Northwest at one point. They didn't change the parking structure and still that. But they didn't. Yeah, that's right. The parking structure didn't change. That street that kind of flow through the neighborhood and come out on the other side. Uh, I remember there was discussion about keeping it more of a passive park than an active park because it was in the back of a neighborhood Uh, and that mm, was probably part of the reason why the dog park went there at the at the entry point of the park instead of on the backside so I mean they kind of did whatever we let them there were a couple different designs in this discussion so wrapping up real quick so we're not here too late Uh, the um, Retain wall and the limestone trail comes out to be just under 200,000 and that limestone trail is the trail that wraps that would that is the trail that ra- that is shown wrapping around the lake now right it would cover that Correct. whole area just the circular part just around the lake okay uh, and then uh, dog park comes out to be just under 200,000 again so keep those in mind uh, anybody else have anything to say no all right then we will move on any board member comments this evening no nobody has anything to say steve i would uh like you to hang on for just a second um i have a question for you it's a a request of you um all right i will move uh we adjourn to executive session at this time for state statute 610.021 subsection 3 uh personnel matters Do I have a second? Yeah, so second. Bill one. Yeah. All right. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? All right. Adjourn to executive session. Jerry, I will get you the time when we come back out. <laughs>